Christside Karate Illuminati, this is Noah, and today I want to take some time to address three terms that often cause a lot of confusion within karate. Those terms are kine, chinkuchi, and muchin. Now, kime is the term that people are probably most aware of out of these three, and it translates to something along the lines of to decide, uh, but you can also see it as sort of a focused intent. It's really meant to be a mental concept, but it has been made into something very physical, and that would be how you stop your techniques when you're training in the air. So, if we were to punch using kime, I'm going to try to be as relaxed as possible while I throw this punch, but at the end I'm going to lock down my entire body, essentially focusing all my intent on that one point. Now, I feel it's important to note that kime is really meant for when you are training without an actual target to strike. Because if you are striking an actual target, you don't want to stop or slow down your technique. You want to let the target do that. But if you're training in the air, such as performing solo kata or solo kihon, then it's really good to use kime in this way so that you don't strain your joints. The second term, chinkuchi, essentially means muscle, sinew, and bone, and it is really a structural concept. The idea with chinkuchi is that there are certain positions that you can put parts of your body into that are more structurally sound than others. We see this with practices like sanchin, where you're trying to establish a strong structure in positions like this, but the same thing applies with every other technique that you might do. There are positions that are going to be more structurally sound and require less effort to maintain. And that's a big thing with chinkuchi. You should only be using as much strength as necessary, and you want to make that as efficient as possible. Now, a lot of people will say that this is a method of power generation, but really it's a method of making sure that the power you generate is delivered efficiently. If I'm punching with poor chinkuchi, then I'm probably going to wing my arm out and try to use as much muscle as I can to throw these punches. If I'm using chin kuchi properly, I'm going to use an efficient path of motion and I'm going to make sure that my joints are in line in a way that allows me to deliver power efficiently. Now the third term, muchimi, can mean several different things, which is especially confusing because it refers to muchi or mochi, which is Japanese sticky rice. And if you've ever seen sticky rice being made, they're smashing it with a mallet and having someone turn it in between each strike. Uh, it's a very bouncy, but sticky and heavy thing. And that is essentially what muchimi is meant to convey within a martial arts context. It is either sticky, springy, or heavy, or some combination of the three. And when you're looking at that from a striking perspective, it would be very different looking from kime. Whereas kime is about stopping the technique, muchimi is more about whipping and bouncing the technique. So rather than ending in this extended position, if I'm throwing punches with muchimi, I'm going to have more of a bounce. Now, of course, that's really only taking into account the springy action, but when you do this as you advance, you tend to become very heavy in your movements and very sticky as part of your fighting method. But either way, Muchimi in the striking context will generally have that whippy, bouncing quality. So again, Kime, or to decide, is essentially how you stop your techniques at the end of their movement. Chinkuchi is about the structure of the postures and techniques in your kata and your kihon, and muchimi is the quality of either being sticky, bouncy, or heavy, depending on the context.